keep me. Good morning, church family! My name is Beth Jones, and I am excited to dive into God's Word with you today. Please take a moment to pause this video and pray together as a family. We reviewed several lessons last week, but it's still always good to start by remembering where we left off in the story. In the last lesson, we learned that Jesus has power over disease and death. Jesus had just returned from a trip across a very large lake. As soon as he came ashore, a man named Jairus begged Jesus to come heal his daughter, who was very sick and close to death. While Jesus was on his way to heal Jairus' daughter, he was touched by a sick woman. This woman had been bleeding for 12 years, and no doctor could help her. But she trusted that Jesus would be willing and able to heal her, so she went up and touched the edge of his clothes. Because of her faith, Jesus healed the woman and stopped to talk with her. During this time, messengers came to tell Jairus that his daughter had died. Jesus told Jairus to have faith and brought the daughter back to life. Jesus instructed the family not to tell anyone about what he did and asked for someone to bring the girl some food. Jairus and the sick woman both knew that Jesus has the power to heal. They came to him for help because they trusted that Jesus' power is personal and kind. This week, we are exploring Lesson 12, Jesus Feeds the 5,000. And our focus passage is John 6, verses 1 through 15. Today's central truth is, Jesus is the Messiah whom Jesus spoke about. As always, let's start by reading the passage together. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing the large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. For our lesson today, we will focus on four key parts of our passage. Jesus saw a fickle crowd on a formative day, verses 1 through 4. Jesus challenged faithless disciples, verses 5 through 9. Jesus provided a fulfilling sign, verses 10 through 13. Jesus rejected a false coronation, verses 14 and 15. What is a miracle? The word miracle can be hard to define. A lot of the time, we use the word miracle to talk about something that is very good or surprising. But a miracle is so much more than that. It is something that happens that is impossible 
without God. Miracles break the rules that we know about science or nature. Jesus feeding 5,000 men with five loaves of bread and two fish is a miracle. Not only was it unexpected for Jesus to be able to find enough food for all those men, it wasn't possible. Five loaves of bread and two fish should have fed just a few people. Instead, Jesus fed thousands and picked up more leftovers than the food he started with. This was a miracle because only God can create more food from nothing. Miracles also show us something about God's character. In our passage today, we see that God cares for the physical needs of his people and that Jesus is God. Both of these things are very important truths. How does Jesus feeding the 5,000 show us that he is the Messiah? This is a bit of a trick question. The easy answer is that we know Jesus is the Messiah because this miracle shows that he is God. But there is more than that. In Deuteronomy 18, Moses says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. How does this relate? First, this miracle took place around the time of the Passover, the festival remembering when the Lord freed the Israelites from Egypt. So they were all thinking about Moses and hoping for the coming Messiah. But the connection doesn't stop with timing. The miracle itself, feeding many people who were not able to get food for themselves, was meant to remind the people of God providing manna in the, to the Israelites while they were with Moses in the wilderness, after the Lord led them out of Egypt. While waiting for the Messiah, the Israelites were looking for the prophet Moses spoke of. By providing food similar to how God provided manna, Jesus pointed to the truth that he was the prophet they were looking for. Why did the people want to crown Jesus king, and why did Jesus refuse? The people wanted to make Jesus their king because they did not understand who he is. They saw Jesus as the prophet that Moses spoke about and even believed that he was the Messiah who would heal their people. But the crowd did not recognize Jesus as God. Instead, the crowd wanted to make Jesus their king so that he would have to continue taking care of their needs. Jesus refused to be crowned king because he knew that they were only interested in him taking care of their physical needs. They didn't even recognize that they had spiritual needs. So, Jesus left them. The next day, he explained to the crowds that his purpose was not to provide physical healing, but to secure salvation for all who believe in him. What are things that we sometimes want from Jesus instead of loving Jesus himself? Just like the crowds of people that Jesus interacted with, sometimes we want things that will make us happy and healthy. We might want to be smarter or cooler or to have more friends, but none of those things are as important as Jesus satisfying our spiritual hunger. The crowds had seen Jesus perform many miracles, so they followed him to a remote place. They wanted physical healing, but they did not honor Jesus as the Son of God. So Jesus performed a miracle to challenge them. By feeding 5,000 people, Jesus brought to mind Moses' prophecy concerning him. He also showed that he had in himself the power of God. However, the people still only wanted what he could provide, so Jesus withdrew from their presence. Those who seek only God's provision, or what God can give us, ignoring the person, that's Jesus, prove that they do not really love Jesus. They actually love themselves. Jesus is just a way to get what they want. These people will not find Jesus, for the gospel is really about being restored to a right relationship with God through His Son. That means wanting Jesus Himself, trusting and honoring 
and obeying and delighting in Him for who He is, the promised Messiah and the true God. So, how can you love Jesus more than you want physical things?